The um, Second Vermont Republic um, began um, in the spring of uh, 2003. Uh, it was inspired uh, uh, by an anti-war rally up at Johnson State College in the new uh, Northeast Kingdom of, uh, of Vermont, in which I've been talking about uh, secession. I've been writing about it for uh, maybe uh, 10 or 12 years by that time. But I really never pitched it to a live audience. And so it was, it was just before the bombing began and the second war in Iraq. And there were a group of these Johnson State students and. and uh, so I did my anti-war pitch and said, um, but, uh, you know, this is, uh, the wars are going to continue. It doesn't matter whether it's Reagan, Bush 1, Bush 2, Slick Willie. Whenever they need to, a, a blip in the polls, they're going to bomb someone. And uh, so I said, have I got a deal for you? And uh, I pitched the idea of Vermont independence. And they were mildly shocked. Um, but you could tell that they got it, that they, they heard heard the message and uh, they literally provided the energy uh, to launch uh, the movement. Uh, a handful of us um, began meeting in a quaint little place in Jericho, Vermont, called uh, the Village Cup. Um, we soon teamed up with the Bread and Puppet Theater, a group of uh, uh, radical puppeteers up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. And the organization meeting was in October of 2000. Um, I would say what kind of the rallying cry initially for the first few years was uh, uh, three things that George Bush uh, did. One was uh, his response to 9-11 and using it so blatantly to exploit his, uh, his agenda and the whole war on terrorism. Uh, second of all, um, the uh, uh, the, the, the war with Iraq, and then third, his re-election in 2004. That, that provided the initial uh, energy for the movement, and kind of major events after that. Um, in 04, with Kirkpatrick Sale, we had a conf small conference in um, Middlebury, Vermont, which gave rise to launching the Middlebury Institute. It was attended by only about 40 people, but it got enormous um, national and international uh, attention. There was something in the air. People were willing to talk about this. I mean, in, in, in 2003, when we began, it's really quite amazing that there were no articles on secession being written by anyone. There were no books. There were no blogs. There were no websites. It, it, I mean, secession had been taboo since the Civil War. And, 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 and today, you know, there's 30 states who've got some form of secession movement. Um, they all have websites, but, but there are easily a dozen websites devoted to new articles on secession um, uh, every, uh, every day. And um, so as Kirkpatrick says, so secession does seem to be in the air. But in, in terms of bringing things up to date, the Middlebury Institute in, in 05, we held a, the first statewide convention on secession in the House chambers of the state capital of Vermont. That was the first statewide convention on secession since, I think, North Carolina seceded in uh, 1861. And um, uh, James Howard Kunstler, the peak oil guy, was the keynote speaker for that one. We did another convention in um, 2008. And uh, more recent uh, activities, um, um, well, I guess it was around 2004, we launched uh, the Vermont Commons, uh, our um, uh, newspaper, bi monthly newspaper that has a particular emphasis on back to the land, small, it's beautiful, local, local for uh, preparing the way for uh, independence. And, Uh, last summer, Dennis Steele launched Radio Free Vermont, uh, which is an internet, uh, internet um, uh, website that plays exclusively uh, uh, Vermont uh, music based music 24 hours a day. It's picked up in about 150 countries worldwide. Um, we um, issued our, uh, our own uh, token, uh, the Nearing uh, token uh, last uh, summer. It's, it's, uh, 
with some pure silver in it as a, as a kind of symbolic gesture that uh, when we achieve independence, we, we may choose to have our own uh, uh, currency. And then uh, this has, in many ways, been the most exciting year of our history. And on January 15th, um, at a press conference in the Capitol Plaza Hotel in Montpelier, uh, we announced that we were running uh, 10 candidates in the current uh, 2010 uh, election, candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, seven um, Senate seats and one House seat. And uh, this is going quite well, particularly with uh, Dennis Steele, who's running for, uh, for um, governor. That's a kind of quick update. Oh.